Hey there, welcome back. So now let's talk about a scalar transport or pluggable solver. Now, so again, in addition to every all of these modeling capabilities that we have seen for, for so far, we can also add a scalar transport equation or the convection diffusion equation no? to see how a passive scalar or normal scalar is transported with your equations, no? is convected. Uh, this functionality is provided via function object. It is a function object and it can be seen as a solver that can be plugged into another one. In previous version, you know, usually you needed to modify your solvers to add these equations. It was something really easy and actual in, in, the, in, the, in the supplements you have there, how to add this scalar transport. But now with this new functionality, you don't need to do it. You can add the, your function objects in the control did. Also remember that this is a new equation, so you need to add discretization schemes and linear solver for the new equations and also boundary initial conditions. And you can add multiple uh, scalars, okay? Uh, or you will have this source code here, so you can open there and see what are the entries required, whatever to read. Uh, for this uh, function object. So this is a genetic description now of the function object, of this specific function object. So it follows the same rules of for the standard function object. So see that the type, the library, you can enable, disable, also the right control option, the log, and these are specific to, to this uh, scalar transport. So see that you can define your diffusion coefficient or if you are using also the turbulence, you can divide it into la laminar and turbulent contribution, okay? You have this option. You give a name to the field, okay? You can call it whatever you want. So in this case, S1. And also, if you want, you can use this entry to use the same numerical scheme that you are using for you, okay? Or if you don't put anything, you will need to explicitly define you now how you want to solve the this scalar transport. Uh, then you need to define initial boundary condition in S1. So this is a concentration and a scalar, so see that it's dimensionless. And you give your standard boundary conditions according to what you want to do. Then as we skin, see that I call it S1, define gradient for that, also temporal derivative if you want, or leave it default, diff skin. So see that this usually this is passive scalars. Uh, you need to use a good numerics now because those, those are strong discontinuity. So usually see that we're here we're using Van Leer uh, SB solution. You use another solver. It's up to you. Okay, so that's all. Okay, for the passive scalar. So let's go to this directory where we have a sample case, and this is what we're going to do now. The elbow case, and see that here we give these velocity values. Okay, and then we say that two passive scalar center S1 entering here, S2 entering here. Okay, and you have it here. Okay, how it's mixing. So this is all. Okay, well, by the way, we're going to use piece of phone, but it's the one you can use pimple phone, whatever. However, with uh, icophone, if I would recall, you cannot use it. Okay, in any case, you can check that. Uh, let's go to our source code here. So you have it here to the elbow passive scalar before that. Let's go to the source code actually. So see that you go SRC function object. And you will have it here under solver, uh, sorry, 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 solvers here. And you open a scalar transport, usually the edge file, and you will see here some standard uh, this, and a script description and see that some explanation. You can keep reading and see that these are some of the entries that you can give there. So some of them are optional, some of them are compulsory, but you have it there, okay? Uh, so now, Let's go to the case and here the setup is very standard. I'm not going to talk about anything. Nothing here is the one you can set up your viscosity, whatever. The only thing that I'm going to talk about is you go into control did and here's where you define that. So if you go to function object section, see that here you define as simple as that. Okay, you have to give it a name, it's color one, two, and your definition. Okay, enable, disable, okay log files, diffusion coefficient, in this case is zero. Okay, so I don't have any diffusion, so I will need to use any uh, very good uh, pneumatics to solve this one. Remember that usually diffusion will, will, is, is helpful for the pneumatics now, but in this case, I put it to zero, give it a name, and same here. So if you call it S1, S2, if you go to zero, you need to define those new quantities. And see here that is you open these files, 
you define those quantities so S1 is entering here and S2 will be entering in the other one okay it's up to you okay you, you choose what you want to do and finally you go into SV skins SV solutions okay and here you add how you want to solve that new numerics that is specific one by the way default here also you will have also derivative for this one but as you put it default Euler and also here you put default Gauss Euler and everything is solved like that but as you want to uh, define explicitly those gradients you just uncomment this or add those and there you have it finally go to a solution and remember new equations new variables solve it using this method and here also well the standard auctions and remember that you have also on the relaxation for this but when you put like this means every variable but in the case that you want to define everyone every variable you are going to have is one is two whatever all the variables but usually when you're using the consistent it's okay to proceed like this so this is all okay so now we're ready to to run this case so be fast as usual, remember find info if you want to see some orange options. So run solver and see you launch it and see that it's solving already here. I have the minimum and maximum. I put it to compute now my minimum and maximum values. Remember that this quantity is strictly bounded. So see that it's becoming a little bit bound, unbounded. So maybe also you can use FV constraints if you want to keep that to force that. But in any case, so see that here and you are solving your equation here see boom and boom okay s1 s2 so they are using numerous and uh, different corrections i see one is just one and two different loops so that you can see so each of the equations can have different actions so see that i'm doing two core and one core here okay just to show you that they are independent okay so this case should be ready at this point let's visualize and the visualization is pretty much the same okay so remember that you have this new field you need to enable here and you access that you have that is color here how it's been transported and let me split the screen okay and in this one let me show s2 and this is it okay as easy as that okay you can add it also in sources and locations okay that is it you can you can mix it also with all the models there is no problem so this is all for this case thank you very much for your attention see you next time which by the way we're almost done okay bye